In this video, we are going to study JavaScript isolation. With JavaScript isolation, we can load certain JavaScript files depending on the component that we are in, which means that, unlike before, where we had to download every single JavaScript file at the beginning of the loading of the application, now we can have JavaScript files that are only going to be loaded if the user goes into a certain component which makes our application very efficient because now the user doesn't have to download unnecessary JavaScript files and can only download them if the user actually needs them. And the mechanism for achieving this is to create JavaScript modules. And then we are going to load those JavaScript modules in memory and we are going to use them through a C -sharp variable. Another good thing about this is that we can avoid to clutter the global state of the application because our JavaScript functions are only going to be available through certain modules and will not be accessible through the window object. Let's see this. We are here in Google Chrome and we have this component which has four buttons, load file, display prompt, display alert, and display alert without module. With load file, we are going to actually load the file, load the JavaScript file. And these two buttons will allow us to execute some exported functions from the JavaScript module. And with this button, we are going to try to fire one of the functions through the window object. And we're going to see that we're going to get an error, but none of this has been implemented because we're going to do that in this video. So let's go to Visual Studio. And here we have this component. And as you can see, everything is empty, so we are going to work with this. The first thing that I want you to see is that we have a JavaScript file here in the www root directory, which is called utils, utils.js, and let's open it. And as you can see, we have these two simple functions, display prompt and display alert. Now, something that I want you to see is that in our index.html file, we are not referencing this utils.js file, but nevertheless, we are still going to use it through the new JavaScript isolation capabilities of Blazor. So let's see that. The first thing that we need to do is to actually load this file into this component or from this component. So for that, we have to use the IJS runtime, which we are injecting here. And now let's go here to this load file method and let's write the following. We're going to say await js runtime dot invoke async and we're going to be returned with a js object reference type. The js object reference is a special type which will allow us to save a JavaScript object in memory. Now here we're going to use the import function which is a special function that will allow us to import a JavaScript module. So let's say dot slash, and because my file is here in the root of the www root directory, we just have to write here utils.js. Now this is going to return a JS object reference, which we are going to save as a field of this component. So I will say JS object reference module, and then I will say module is equal to this module that we have here. Now, Something that we have to do is to actually export these functions. So let's just write here, export and export here. And with this, we are ready to use these functions from this variable that we have here. Now let's go to these two methods that we have here. And what we want to do with them is to execute the two exported functions from the utils file. So let's go here and let me copy this name, display prompt, and let's go here. And this is going to return something that the user writes in the prompt and that something is going to be a name. So I will say name equal to name being this variable that we have here. And I will say await module because if I want to use this module that we have here, we have to do it through this module variable that we have here. We cannot use the IJS runtime directly anymore. We have to use the JS object reference variable that references this module utils.js that we have here. So I will say invoke async and this is going to return a string. And here I will put the name of the function. This is used in the same way 
as the IJS runtime invoke async method. We have the name of the method and the parameter. Here we have the name of the method and the parameter. Here I will say, write your name and that's it here. Now let's go to display alert and let's do the same. I will say await module. In this case, I will say invoke void async because our alert function does not return anything. So let me go here and let me grab the name, display alert. And we have to put message here because this is the parameter. And let's say display alert and let's get this here. And I will pass a parameter, which is going to be the text displayed in the alert. This is an alert message. And finally, I want us to do this example because I want you to see what happens if we try to invoke a function that comes from a module through the IJS runtime. So I will copy this JS runtime. And I will come here and let's say that I'm going to try to use the JS runtime to invoke the exported function of a module. We're going to see that we're going to get an error in this line of code. Now we're ready to make our first tests. So let's save here. And now let's go back to Google Chrome. I will refresh the page. And before we do anything, let's press F12. Let's go to network. I will disable cache so that I always get the latest version of the JavaScript file. And let's see something. Let's see that when I click on load file, then it is that I get the utils.js file. So as you can see, we can decide when is the JavaScript file going to be downloaded. And now that I downloaded the JavaScript file and I have the module in memory, I can do display prompt, for example, and here I can write my name, let's say Felipe, okay. And as you can see, we have the value that we wrote in the prompt here in our application. Now let's do the same for display alert. As you can see, we have an alert message here, which is fine. And as we were saying, we cannot use the exported function from the IJS runtime directly. So let's go to console and let's see that if I try to do this, then we get an error, which is normal because the display alert function is not on the window object, but it is on the utils.js module. Something else that I want you to see is that, let me refresh this page, is that maybe you want the file to be automatically downloaded when the user goes in the component. For that, you can use a lifecycle method like on after render async. So let's go back to Visual Studio and let's do that. Let's copy this and let's paste it here in this on after render async method. And that's actually it. Let's save here and let's go back to Google Chrome. Let's go to network and let's see that if we refresh the page, we are going to immediately get the utils.js file. And not only that, if I click on load file, you are going to see that we are not, I am clicking the load file button several times. We are not getting any more utils.js files because Blazor knows that we already have that file in memory and therefore it doesn't download it again. And if, for example, we go to the home page and we refresh the page, you are going to see that we are not getting, of course, the utils.js file, but we are only getting it if we go to the component that we were in. Let's click here. And as you can see, now we have the utils.js file here. So as you can see, we can use the JavaScript isolation new capabilities of Blazor in .NET 5 to only download certain JavaScript files when we want and not immediately after the user comes into the application which makes our application more performant. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and let me know what you want me to cover next. And also I have an Udemy course, which teaches you Blazor from scratch by building a complete project. Thank you.